Hi there everybody, it's Halsey from slimandstylish.com. Thank you for joining me today. Today I have a hummingbird silhouette card for you. I love this card. I didn't know whether I would when I started it because I love the hummingbird from the Humming Along set, but I've been using it with my blends and making it bright and colorful and beautiful. And I wasn't quite sure whether I'd like making it into a blackbird, but I did. And I love how the background formed and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So you want your piece of cardstock this is my top mat. You want a white, black, white sandwich with just an edge of the black showing around. Okay, so this is the top white and I'm going to be using the Hummingbird, as I said, from the Humming Along Clink stamp set. This stamp set was new in the Occasions catalogue. And like I said, I love it. I, I quite like quite a few of the stamp sets in the Occasions catalogue this year. The car one hasn't really stuck me, so I haven't bought that, but most of them I have. If you haven't seen the catalogue, let me know and I will send it out to you. I'm using Stays On for this project, for the outline. I hate the smell of Stays On. <laughs> I really do. It smells like marzipan. I'm not that keen on marzipan. But one of the girls from my team, when we were at a team day, she said, oh, I love the smell of Stays On. And I was like, great. You can go and stamp with it. <laughs> I don't like it. So first of all, I'm just going to stamp that onto the card. I'm going to stamp it towards the top. Like that. Cute. And I'm using my Stampin' Write Basic Black Marker. Just to colour it in. I love the Basic Black Marker. Um, and I think it's such a good of a idea of stamping up to sell this as an individual marker. Most of their stamp and write markers you buy as part of a set. So you purchase either um, the Suttles range and the entire Suttles range or the entire um, in colours range. And if you're not sure whether you like it or not, that can be a bit of a pricey outlay as to whether you're going to use them. But you can try the basic black first off means you can buy this on its own and if you do like it you can then look at buying the others and it gives you sort of like a, a trial really rather than just jumping straight in and buying all of the stamp and write markers. They're different for colouring with the stamp and write markers because they don't blend like your blends do, they don't run into each other or anything. However, they're quite good because the fine tip is a little bit finer than the blends and it works really nice like a fell tip and then you've also got the writing end which writes in the exact same colour as your ink and they're refillable so that's quite a good plus with them also in case you haven't used them you can use these to stamp with so all you do is you apply the brush end onto your stamp and hey presto you can stamp with it so if you wanted to stamp with different colours for instance you can. Genius. If you have tried them and you do like them, but you think to purchase them all is quite pricey, I do run a stamp and blends club. Speak to me about it. Just drop me a message below or drop me an email or head over to my blog and leave me a message and I'll come back to you with all the details of it. But what we do is there's a few ladies each month. I purchase all of them and then I send out a couple to each person and then the next month I'll send out a couple more. They're different colours obviously so you will end up in the end with a whole pack and you will also end up with a carry case to keep them in but you won't have to make that initial outlay straight away. It's more of sort of a collection club and you just pay monthly. So if you wanted the details on that do just drop me a message and I will send that out to you. his tail. I know it's a silhouette, I know, <laughs> so I could have just scribbled it all in but I don't want to because I don't know whether you noticed the bush strokes do show up slightly so I wanted them to actually look like feathers for anyone who is eagle-eyed and really paying attention to the brush strokes from the marker. I want my bird to be realistic. <laughs> It was tricky with this because trying not to use the blends. Um, I do love my blending markers, I really do. And I do like the Stampin' Write markers. 
um, but I just seem to have just got on a blend kick at the moment. I'm using them for every project. I'm really worried that people will think, oh, she can only use those, she can't do anything else. So that's why I've challenged myself to not use them as much. And then I worried because I thought, this little bird, he needs his colour. But I do quite like him as a blackbird and I really like the effect of sponging in a background. Sorry, I don't often talk when I'm colouring. I don't know why. I did think as I started colouring I would um, speed you all on so you don't have to sit through the whole colouring process. However, as I've almost finished it and I haven't stopped talking, <laughs> that just seems pointless. <laughs> oh dear. But there we go. There's my little bird, all coloured in. Now what I've already done ahead of time, because I didn't want you sitting here why I did it, is I have stamped him out and cut him out on a piece of post-it note. And I've left his tail as a sticky bit so that I can just mask him quite nicely there. You don't need to apply any extra tack with him. So you know sometimes you stick your snail under or anything else. You don't really need to do that with him because I'm actually going to be using my post-it notes again. I've got the long post-it notes and I'm going to mask the rest of the card off ready for my blending. I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of grid paper because I know I often go off the paper with my blending. And I don't know why I'm a bit, I want it the right way up. I just ignore the colours that are already on it. <laughs> It's a scrap piece. Waste not, want not. Don't always ruin the nice pieces. So I'm just going to line that up and I'm going to pop across a straight piece of post-it. Probably about there. Yeah, I want a bit of his tail hanging off. So let's line that up there. And across to there on that side. There we go. And this is going to help keep your masking section down. A stray piece of masking section <laughs> and then at the top I'm just going to do exactly the same I'm probably going to do it there because I just want a little bit of his top wing also off the page so there we are there's my bird the colors I'm using I have got that right haven't I one two three four five six seven eight nine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it must be the angle I'm sitting, doesn't look straight. Um, lovely lipstick, grapefruit grove, and then pineapple punch. I'm starting off with dark colour, bizarrely. Normally I start with the light, but I am starting off with a dark colour because it's at the top and I don't want to lean over the light to get to the dark. So I'm using my dauber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off the page up on the post-it note okay and then off I come and I'm just rubbing in to the bird okay I'm going quite dark at the top because I will be blending it into the orange and I do want it to definitely see the difference between the two colours. Keep the masking tape down at the same time. Try and get in close to the masking section because you don't want to leave a white gap between the bird and The door broom. And then just blend all the colour in. I think I'm blending my finger more than the uh, paper. It won't hurt because my nails are red, but there we go. That's 
sort of how you want it. I'm just going to do it at the top again just to make sure it's properly, properly dark. I know that the bird is black, so if you are um, sponging over the top of him, it's not going to make a massive deal because he's black. But because we used the memento, no we didn't, because we used the stamp and write marker, this is water-based. And as you go over the top of it with the water-based ink, it will blur. And I don't want it to look muddy. The stays on would have been fine, but I don't have a stays on pen. <laughs> so, grapefruit grove. In here, I'm going down quite low with this because I am going to be using the pineapple punch at the bottom. I want all the colours to blend in. So sort of like there is fine. Keep going. So until you've got all your white bit done with where you want the grapefruit grove to go so that's roughly where I want the grapefruit grove to go but I want it to go in to my lovely lipstick so I'm just going to take it all over the lovely lipstick and blend the two colours in together it's going to be a bit hard around his beak so I'm just going in a bit darker up there just to definitely make sure that the two colours have blended in and I'm going to take it all the way up to the top This is another reason why I've started with a dark colour first because if I came in with a dark colour last and tried to go over the light colour it would completely cover it whereas my lovely lipstick is still shining through quite brightly. Oh! And my hummingbird's out! <laughs> He's escaped! He hasn't really. He's okay. I'm not going to stick him back down though because I have really already finished up there. Don't worry about that. I'm going to come back in and grab that lightly with my daubers. I'm being really naughty. My yellow dauber ripped. So I am using... <gasps> I'm using my grapefruit grove one. But it won't be too obvious. Just get some of that colour out. Get a lot of that colour out. <laughs> there we go ink that up now with the uh, pineapple punch and off we go and once you've got this to the colour you want which it pretty much already is you're then going to start blending upwards and you're going to go into both colours now Keeping going round in your circular motion and really go up on it. Starting at the edge and I'm going to then come back down. Go up, keep blending. Of course, when I come back down, it's bringing the grapefruit grove down. But that just means that the two colours are merging quite nicely together. really sped this bit up for you but I want you to see, you to see how you get rid of the lines to merge them all in together and that's literally just by playing along the actual seam with a darker colour sort of like that so now instead of tapping it off I'm just playing along the lines with it at full colour All I'm going to do now is just remove the hummingbird down so I can see where the light bits are. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a mask in there. Like that. 
only tiny because I'm really going to come in with my pen and clean that up. I just want to see which bits of red and orange are left without any of the yellow over the top. There we go. So that's all of my blending with it done. So I'm just going to remove the masks. I've thrown the hummingbird away because I've simply played over it so much that it's gone quite wet. But if you hadn't got it wet and you had just done one or two stamps, you could always keep that in your stamp case for whenever you next needed to do it. Now this you just have to be careful. Be really delicate with your hands and just go over where the white bit is because you don't want any white to show otherwise it's just gonna it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb because the rest of that part is colourful. I'm just going over that. Okay. And there's my hummingbird really. Oh no, bring my mask back. I forgot a step. Where did I throw him? There he is. I'm just going to stick him back down again. No, fancy forgetting a step. I forgot to splosh it with the water. Now, because it's water based, when you actually splosh the card with the water, it creates this lovely effect. But if that effect gets on the bird, it will do the same to him. So I'm just covering him up um, only lightly so we don't get that effect with him. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to grab a block. Have I got a spare block? I'm just going to use my spray. Um, I could use this and spray it at the top here. I don't want to. I want to get more of a controlled splatter. So I'm using my aqua marker, but I'm actually taking the water from the block instead and I'm just going to knock it off like that onto him. Once I've got him with the amount of spots I want, I think that's about it. I'm just going to pick that up with a tissue and it will take some of the colour out. Hmm, it didn't splot as much as I thought it would. it's splotted more at the top I don't think I'm being I'm not over the top of it so I'm not seeing it very well let's just drop a few bigger droplets on there using the aqua marker give it that sort of bocker effect. It has still got some of the little drops on it. I don't know if you can see those at the top here. But I've just popped some big dots as well. And move that off. There you are. I've finished with my, my definite layer this time. Just to neaten him up, I've still come in with the stamp and write marker and my ruler. And this time I've used the writing end instead. And I'm just going to go across where the line is just there and I'm just going to draw a straight line all the way across there just to create that sort of effect so it looks like it's properly contained. There we go and then thank you let's just grab that out of the set. going to use my stays on because that's what's out but you can go back to using memento now because I'm not using any more watercolor or masking or anything but as stays on is out I will use stays on
if you're purchasing stays on for the first time, it doesn't come off your blocks. It literally stays on. That's the point of stays on. So you'd need to purchase this stays on cleaner. It's really good. It's just got a foam top and you rub it over your stamp. So if you can see where the ink line is, that's not gonna come off. So you rub it over and that just dissolves the stays on. You can then grab your chamois or whatever else you use and you can rub it off that way and it cleans your stamps up a tree and then just leave it to dry. Okay, I won't do the other one because you've seen how that works now. <laughs> but yeah, it's a handy tip. If you buy stays on, you're going to want to clean up from it. So do get the cleaner as well. I'm just going to move this off so I don't ruin the base of my card. I'd hate to get that all watercoloured. And then I'm just going to stick this onto the black backing with some Tombow. And then I'm going to stick it onto the back of the card. I'm also sticking it with Tombow as well because I just want it to be flat. Um, I feel there's too much design going on in the front to pop it up. And then finally, I'm just going to show you another use for the stamp and write markers that you might not have thought of. Because they match the blacks perfectly. I don't know whether you can see just where I did that bocker effect here. This hasn't come on quite clear. So if you go on to the writing end, you can just fill in that gap over the bocker pin. Just there. Follow it down. And there you go. Perfect idea, really. And there's my card. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. All of these products are available for purchase over on my website, www.slimandstylish.com. And if you purchase them now, you get to take advantage of celebration. If you want the catalogues for that, just let me know. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and click the little bell underneath me so that you can get notifications of my other videos. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon. Bye.